All right. Uh, probably most of you got this already, having had a bit of time to look at it, but Nginx Cypher Suites. My name's Giles Orr. I work for Toronto Public Library. There you got it. Um, oh, and it's doing that. I really hate when it does that. All right. So this is kind of administrative. When I post it, you'll actually be able to hopefully navigate the slideshow. Um, oops. And of course it's done that. So, yeah, you got my notes out here. So my first question for you is, who here runs a web server or a proxy? Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. So those points are up there because it's getting to be a bad idea to have an unencrypted site anymore. And it's also, it makes, it's getting pretty easy financially to do it. It is still a relatively complex thing to do. Um, I wanted to make the point that whatever certificate authority you decide to use, um, do some research on them, please. Uh, and make sure that they're not deprecated or rejected by browsers, which does happen occasionally. So this is one of my favorite things. Um, we all call it SSL. It is not SSL anymore. But you will not hear anybody, well, very few people calling it TLS, which is the only encryption or the only method used. But, so if I call it SSL, I mean TLS. And if you are setting up a web server or proxy server like HA proxy, don't use SSL. Um, now, my comment about TLS 1.3 was accurate in April. I suspect it is probably still true. What's happened is it has been I think formally ratified at this point, but in practical terms, OpenL SSL does not support it yet, so nobody's using it. That leaves you with TLS 1.2, 1.1, and 1.0, and I recite them in that order because that's the order you should be using them in. Uh, most people use 1.0 for support of old browsers. If you happen to be in a circumstance where, well, you've got a lab or a controlled group of people, you can just use the higher, like 1.2, uh, and just stick with that and save yourself having to run 1.0. So these are the lines in your configuration file that you are going to have to set up. And it's the only thing I'm really talking about tonight. Um, the cipher strings that you will put in are very similar. Between HA proxy and Nginx, they are identical. And in Apache, there's some minor name change, but it is otherwise essentially the same. The problem is, when you're setting this thing up, cipher suites are seriously volatile. And what that means is, people are always creating new ones, someone else is trying to break them, some of them are doing it for legitimate research, some of them are black hats and want to break into things. And what it means is they get invalidated over time and new ones are created. And what is currently a valid setup two months from now can be completely screwed because one of your ciphers has been broken. Yeah, a good example of that would be RC4, which I'm sure most of you remember, which was incredibly important to the beginning of the web and is now completely and totally busted.
So this is what it commonly looks like, the line in your configuration file. And, well, this is just it, yeah. It's, um, it's not your friend. And trying to understand it is basically a rabbit hole full of pain. Um, the structure is really basic. You've got cipher suites, they are separated by colons, and the line is terminated by a semicolon. That part's easy. Unfortunately, what is not easy is researching every single one of those acronyms. <laughs> That's not much fun. So, unfortunately, we don't have, um, or at least I don't have, an internet connection here, so I can't show you uh, Mozilla's configurator, but I would highly recommend you check it out. Uh, I'll be posting these slides later, so you should be able to get them. Um, what it allows you to do is to say, I am configuring Nginx and I want you to use the intermediate configuration, and it will generate an entire config file. So this is the easy way. You can take that and slap it into your site, and you're almost done. <laughs> you're obviously going to have to point it at your files, but that's another issue. So that will work. Uh, I would encourage you to actually do both, as in try this and then do your own research. This will also support um, Nginx and Apache, so you can switch to them. And you can also tell it what version of OpenSSL you're using. So it should get it all right. I've been pretty happy with it, but um, uh, obviously I'm standing up here because I did dig into this some more. Yeah, um, if you are using it, modern is uh, probably not a good idea, again, unless you have a very controlled subset of browsers coming in. Uh, it will cut off anybody, you know, below Firefox 58 and below the last two versions of Chrome. Hmm? Is there something more open for the I'd like everybody to be able to read it? Uh, as far as I can tell, I'm, I can't give you 100% on this, but um, there is something below intermediate, but uh, it will use TLS1 and possibly SSL3. Uh, and the only thing you're getting back is your um, Internet Explorer 6 users. So it goes a long way. Intermediate goes pretty far back. You're going to lose 1 to 2% at most. And I would. I would say that's for me at Toronto Public Library where we see a lot of old browsers. So for most people, it's, it's a lot less than that. Okay. So this is something I'm going to beat on repeatedly. What you configure today uh, is likely to be busted in about two months. You need to keep testing. And I'll get into that a bit more. So this is one of the bits I am shakiest on. Um, so ECDHE is uh, Elliptic Curve Diffie-Hellman Ephemeral Keys. Um, and then, of course, the next one is Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. <sighs> then Advanced Encryption Standard with a key size. Uh, GCM is your Galois counter mode and secure hash algorithm, again, followed by a key size. Now, somebody probably has an answer here, and if they want to stand up and give us a short introduction, each of these is a part of the communication system between the browser and the server. Um, they, it takes several stages and uses different parts. And all of these are needed, so you end up with these very complex strings representing what you think it should be trying to communicate with. So, yeah. 
and that is the don't use list at the end. And which ones you want to block are, well, partly up to you, but obviously you should block things like RC4. I kept running into some weirdness about DES because I, I found one site that told me DES fi was fine, but 3DES was bad, and another that said 3DES was fine and DES was bad, and I'm like, 3DES is DES applied three times, so either one's bad or the or if one's bad, they're both bad. So I junked them both. Um, and some of these are actually public key things that probably don't even need to be listed. I think PSK and SRP, it would never try to apply those, but I threw them in. Um, yeah, and DSS, okay. That's, I don't know. I haven't dealt with it. Um, but oof. I suspect it's not handled at this level, but I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. So this is actually a reference slide. Um, I'm not going to go into all the gory details, but what I've, list I've done is listed out all the algorithms and ciphers I could find. So if you want to come and take a look at this once I've posted the slides, um, it's got the lot. And links to all of them, mostly on Wikipedia, as you probably expect. So everybody got that? I was presenting at Code for Lib in mid-April, and I did try to contact them a couple weeks in advance. Didn't hear a word from them. Um, so I, I looked up their site, and now apparently someone at the conference did get in touch with them. It's better now, uh, although not great. Um, I managed to keep most of my sites at a on this particular test. Um, the test in question is, um, if you just go to Google and put in Qualys SSL, I cannot remember the site at the moment, but um, Q-U-A-L-Y-S. There are a number of different sites. You're obviously not required to use this particular one, but I like it because they go into a lot of detail. I've chopped it off uh, after this you know, sort of score panel that you're seeing but they go into gory detail of why they think it is bad, which ciphers you're using are wrong, um, that you shouldn't be using SSL3 in this case, um, that you're not using OCSP stapling, whatever. It's quite a good test. So I was in Japan um, and Seoul about three weeks ago, and looking behind the curtain is a really bad idea. Um, I, to get to Narita or Haneda Airport, uh, you probably take the Keisei, and uh, I like the Keisei Skyliner. It's 2,400 yen, and it's a bit cheaper if you buy online, but I ran them through and sort of went, I think I will buy it in person. Um, another thing I've been finding, I've set, and, and this is how I caught code for lib in the first place, um, you can set Firefox under about config to not accept SSL2, SSL3, or even TLS 1.0. And I think this is a good idea. Uh, it also caught the Ontario Science Center, um, who it took a while to get a hold of them too, but they are now up at A. They um, they got on it. I was very pleased about that because they were dealing with money. Code for Lib is not. That might involve personal information, probably not. It's just a wiki, um, but you'd still hope it would be properly encrypted because otherwise it's security theater and pretty useless. But 
Yeah, so once you start looking, oh, the other, the trap with putting, going into about config on Firefox and setting it um, to say, I'm not going to accept anything less than TLS 1.1, is when you hit a 1.0 site, Firefox says, oh my god, you've really messed up your settings. Do you want to reset them so they're proper? I'm like, no, I want it to be secure. So it's, it's a weird behavior on Firefox's part. Yeah, I just tossed in these bits. I still have not got OCSP stapling to work. I have followed everybody's instructions and other people's instructions. And uh. um, Anybody familiar with HSTSL? We have a couple questions. We have three questions. I'm going to start with Chris. I've never heard of OCSP stapling. Uh, what is that? Online Certificate Status Protocol. Um, what it means is uh, when their browser comes to your server and asks for your cert, um, if you do not include the parent cert, they also may have to query the certificate authority. So I, th I believe what it is is that you will include both in one package, which means it's a faster download. Okay, Scott, microphone. Okay, well, same. All right. Um, does anybody even know what HSTS is? Okay, one. Um, HSTS, which I thought I had put the definition in here for. Um, anybody, do you remember what it stands for? <laughs> no. Okay, neither do I. Basically what you're doing is you are telling browsers, you have come to my secured site, I will never unsecure it, you should never trust this site again if you come to it and you get any different certificate or anything. So it will remember, and you, you set a timeout on this, usually six months. Um, of course, the problem is, say you have a VM in the cloud and it gets mucked up and you're with Let's Encrypt, so you're like, ah, hell with it. You wipe the VM and you spin up a new server and it grabs a new cert from Let's Encrypt and you're busted. Nobody can visit your site who has ever visited it before because you had HSTS turned on and you now have a different certificate. So we now use Ansible to carefully migrate those old certs. It's just an odd quirk of HSTS with Let's Encrypt. So. I don't think this is a problem because the certificate authority will essentially return you a thing that is tagged in the same way but with a different date? I'm not 100% on that one. But with Let's Encrypt, we migrate them and keep renewing them and it treats it as the same. So I would assume certificate authorities do the same thing. Okay, and I'm going to hit one this same thing one last time. Keep using the testing sites to test the security of your site because the next time your new site says, oh, some algorithm has been busted. Your score just went down by six points, and it's time to fix your configs. OK, any other questions? All right, I'm going to start with Alex this time. What about email certificates? I haven't a damn clue. Sorry, I, it's not something I've dealt with. What about when? your algorithms go crusty, doesn't that mean HSTS is going to be suddenly unhappy about things? You no, had, because you were that's, forced to change your search. No. Uh, no, the search separate from the algorithms. Um, 
This is one of the bits that I have to admit I don't have fully have my head around, but the if you hold on a second. Yeah, if you look at this, it's treating the cipher strength, the key exchange, the protocol support, and the certificate at all as separate entities um, because they are not directly tied. The, the choice of ciphers is yours, and it is not tied to the cert. Uh, so at the point where the certificate, the algorithm is being used to generate the certificates, if those become weak, you're probably in a world of hurt anyways, I suppose. But, but it's fire, so the should be upgrading to a new algorithm. What he said, way. and we recently dealt with this because we were using Symantec and had, well, and, and went on to Digicert. Um, why they stuck with them instead of Let's Encrypt, I don't know, but that's another story. Um, but I think yeah, you'd have to move, but I think it would happen in an orderly fashion. I can't tell you for sure. All right. Have you used a commercial service like SSL Checker uh, .io, and if, or do you use like um, an open source one that you can suggest? Um, SSL Checker is basically something that emails you when your score goes below A. Huh? No, I have not used that. Sounds like a good idea. Um, and I tried a couple of others, uh, but have always ended up coming back to this one. So I, I really can't give much advice on the others. I think that's it. Thanks, everyone.